What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. Now, today I'm going to be talking to you about characters in your reef tank. And I've been really excited to make this video because for me it's what makes this hobby so interesting. There's so much variety and there are loads of marine animals that have great character. Whether that's the amusing looking skunk cleaner shrimp making an appearance to chew on some leftovers or pick parasites off a tang, or a cleaner ass riding a golden puffer like a steed before chasing after him and nibbling gently on his soft bits. And you can probably train most inquisitive fish to take food straight out of your hand. But today I'm going to single out tank inhabitants that have a certain je ne sais quoi. Number seven on my list is the porcelain anemone crab. They are one of the few reef safe crabs in the hobby and they have the delightful combination of looking harder than a coffin nail but actually being softer than a baby's bottom in a bowl of talcum powder. They can host anemones or corals like hammer corals, they can live in pairs, and one more thing, they can even die. Are mandarins and scooter blennies. The first thing that will strike you about these fish is just how spectacular they look you will not find a more beautifully patterned fish in the hobby. But they are also endlessly entertaining to watch. Unlike most free swimming fish, they bimble around on the sand bed and rock work in short bursts while looking for copepods to chew on. No other fish move like them, so they add real variety to your reef. The downside is that they have quite a high mortality rate, they usually don't accept prepared foods, so you do need an established tank with lots of copepods for them to hunt. Now algae refugiums are the perfect place for copepods to breed and I wouldn't mind betting most new reefers get an algae bed mainly to enable them to keep mandarins and scooter blennies. I know I did. Number five on my list are sand sifting gobies. These guys will spend all day every day ploughing your sand bed looking for whatever tasty morsels they can find. They're another difficult to keep fish as they do require a mature sand bed packed full of delicious amphipods but in the right tank they are hilarious to watch and they have the added bonus of keeping your sand bed all shiny and clean. There are loads of varieties of sand sifting gobies and some are more respectful than others of where they spit out the sand. So you do need to be aware of gobies that swim up into the water column before emptying entire mouthfuls of sand onto your prized corals. Number four on my list are hawkfish and specifically the scarlet and long-nosed hawkfish. These guys have a reputation for decimating invertebrates that I think is largely unjustified. I'm yet to lose a shrimp, crab or snail to either of my two hawks. And frankly, they're so entertaining, I'd forgive them if they did eat something without considering how much it cost me. The unique thing about hawkfish is that they have no swim bladder, so they have to perch on rocks, glass and algae scrapers. Their eyes move independently of one another like a chameleon, and you can be pretty sure they're keeping one eye on you at all times. And as a Brucey bonus, they're easy to keep and will happily live in small tanks of 30 gallons or more. Number three on my list are jawfish. Now the only reason these guys don't feature higher on my list is that they require a bit more careful thought to keep them long term. Supposedly they like cooler temperatures than our reef tanks like, particularly the stunning blue spotted jawfish. But aside from that, they have bags of personality and live in burrows they dig themselves and maintain throughout the day. They often hover just outside their burrows and dart back inside at the first sign of trouble. They're a serious wow factor fish that will reward anyone prepared to accommodate their needs. So the runners up on my list are shrimp gobies. There are numerous varieties of this fish and what makes them unique is that they form a symbiotic relationship with pistol shrimp. The deal is, the pistol shrimp will dig a burrow for them both to live in, while the goby keeps an eye out for any danger. Pistol shrimps have poor eyesight, so they keep a tentacle in contact with the goby at all times. If the goby spots danger, he makes a bolt for the burrow, and the shrimp follows suit. Pistol shrimp will spend the day constantly tidying their home, much like your mum used to when you were a kid. The pistol shrimp is so called because it has a snapping mechanism that it uses to catch its prey. So if you hear a loud clicking sound coming from your tank, don't worry, it's just the shrimp having supper. And number one on my list of characters for your reef tank are blennies. They're peaceful, reef safe, colorful, easy to keep, 
and best of all, they're simply hilarious. They constantly look for holes in the rockwork to back in and out of, they swim at a funny angle, and I swear to God, they smile at you. This is my Midas Blenny. If I could take him out of the tank and rub his belly, I would. My first ever saltwater fish was a bicolour Blenny, and I simply wouldn't have a tank without a Blenny now. Some of them even have the decency to eat algae and will spend the day cleaning your glass and your rockwork. And best of all, there's loads of variety, so you can choose whatever Blenny you like the most. So there's my top seven characters for your reef tank then. Now it just so happens that they are all nano tank friendly, so they will be fine in a tank of 30 gallons or more. There's loads that didn't make the cut today though. I didn't even have space for the goggly eyed dog face puffer. So let me know in the comment section below what your favorite characters are. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. And in the meantime, check out some of my other videos. Until next time then, I've been the Reef Talk. Thank you, good night.